I've spent a lot of time beside two reporters the last few weeks. I finally get to squeeze between two reporters. It's our Vancouver Bureau Chief Farhan Lalji and his beautiful dog, and our Edmonton Bureau Chief Ryan Rashog and a beautiful <laughs> set of curtains. Uh, guys, <laughs> a Sunday evening bombshell for the Canucks. Hours after the team's media availabilities on Sunday, uh, reports of Brock Besser being out for Game 7 due to a blood clotting issue surface. Farhan, first of all, what can you tell us about it and what exactly does this mean for the Canucks lineup going into Game 7? Well, Jim, my understanding is the signs and symptoms around this issue were there yesterday uh, during Game 6 and they significantly worsened overnight and into the morning. Now, fortunately for Besser, this is not a life-threatening situation. It's not career-threatening, but it's also something that's not going to be resolved in short order. So even if the Canucks somehow find a way to get through Game 7 without him, I'm not sure he's going to be ready for the early stages of the next round. I think this could take some time. The Canucks want to be very cautious with it. And as far as what this does to the lineup, look, this is a team that has offensive challenges to begin with. It's going to be even more difficult for them to replace the guy who's leading their team in scoring in these playoffs. 12 points, 7 <laughs> goals, and he also plays a matchup role at times against some of Edmonton's top players. So, you know, one of the things they are going to do, it looks like, is Elias Lindholm is going to reunite with Connor Garland and Dakota Joshua. That could be the matchup line for Connor McDavid's group. But then I do believe, even though maybe the Lions today didn't necessarily show it, Miller wasn't at practice, I do think Pedersen and Miller are going to see extensive minutes together so that they could provide some additional offensive support on that line in tomorrow night's game. And then on the other end, and of course, we are hoping for the best for Brock Besser. We are hoping he recovers quickly. But Ryan, for the Oilers, with the Canucks leading score out of the lineup, uh, this is big. How does this affect Edmonton's plan going into Game 7? Yeah, I, I don't know that it, you know, materially affects their plan, Jay. But, it, I mean, you just heard Farhan lay it out there. I mean, their leading scorer. And the thing about Besser is he's an Oiler killer. Like, this guy scores goals against the Oilers. You remember earlier on in this series, he scored two on Stuart Skinner right from point blank. And, you know, that that essentially chased Stuart Skinner from the series for a couple of games. Uh, you know, the results from that game. And Besser played a big role in that. So, as Farhan mentioned, he plays a lot of minutes against Connor McDavid being on that JT Miller line. In fact, he's played the most five-on-five minutes against McDavid of any of the Canuck forwards. Now someone else is going to have to take uh, those difficult minutes. So uh, it doesn't necessarily affect their game plan. A big loss for the Vancouver Canucks. And no question, we got to call it what it is. It's a break for the Oilers. Farhan, how's your dog doing? Is he upset there's someone outside the house? There's, there's someone at the door and she's trying to protect us. Kind of like, you know, a, something like maybe Nikita Zadorov would do against uh, against uh, Vander Kane. That's really good. That's a perfect analogy. You're very yeah. sharp. Uh, now, Arter's yeah. Shilovs, we know he allowed those five goals in the Game 6 loss. This is interesting. Rick Tockett, guys, catching you guys in the media off guard to start his Sunday availability. Let's take a listen. Rick, a big opportunity here tomorrow. Well, hang on. Night. Before we start, Demko's oh. starting tomorrow. So. Actually? Yeah. Okay. I'm joking. <laughs> Let's get, get, it, get, it, get it out of the way. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> hey, who, said he didn't have it. A, who said he didn't have a sense of humor? Uh, so, Demko, let's make it official, will not be available Monday night. Uh, but, Ryan, I mean, talking caught you a bit off guard there, didn't he? I bet. I bet so hard, Jay. Like, I was diving for my <laughs> phone to send a tweet. I looked at Farhand. I was just, you know, uh, completely bit. But why not start with a little bit of levity? Like, good for him. Because that question's been coming every single day. So I bit hard. It was really funny. Uh, Farhan believes that it was only us traveling media that bit, though, that all the, the local guys knew exactly what was going on the whole time. Jay, this reminds me of a story from the 2006 Olympics in Turin. And Ryan played one on me. And basically, the, the nuts and bolts of it is, the short version, our good friend and hockey producer Bill Dodson, Ryan set it up that he was very, very angry with Bill. And Bill was not happy with Ryan and complained to our bosses. And Ryan thought he was going to lose his job. So the next time he saw Bill, he was going to strangle him. And sure enough, Bill walks in, Ryan jumps in his face, and I get right between them and say, this isn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> and they both started laughing, and I bit so hard. Ryan bit that hard today. Yeah. And it was pretty far, amazing. Like, I looked it was, at Billy, and I go, you know, look, as far as. And I go running at him, and Farhan's like, no, this isn't happening. He gets between us, 
He thought we were going to fight, Jay. And it was on Valentine's Day. You want to talk about between two reporters? I was between reporter and producer at that moment. Now, as far as as Rick Tockett's concerned, Mm. he's got to keep his team loose, right? I mean, this is a group that hasn't faced elimination as a group yet in these playoffs or at any time since this core has been assembled. So he's going to try to keep it loose. I asked Archer Shilovs, I said, are you going to wear a tacky shirt? so that JT Miller might be able to make fun of you and just keep the team loose. He said he wasn't going to do that, but I have to believe someone's going to try to do something to break the ice around this group that just hasn't been down this road before. Um, Man, you guys are having so much fun in this series. I love it. No, ultimately, (laughs) ultimately, though, you know, Monday's game could just come down to Game 7 experience, right? The Oilers have plenty of that, don't they, Ryan? Yeah, and I think, you know, the Canucks have some individual Game 7 experience for sure, but I think where the Oilers is a little bit different is this core group has been through this together, right? The McDavid's and Dreisaitl's and Nugent Hopkins, Nurse, um, some of these guys a couple of years ago, they got through a, a tough Game 7 situation against the L.A. Kings. So more recent experience as a group, I would say, for the Oilers. Uh, it's a calm group. The leadership group presents that. The head coach presents that. And, and they certainly have something to sink their teeth into as well, Jay, because, you know, the power play... Uh, oh, for the last couple of games here, I think that's something they'll put a real focus on. So something to focus on, and I think they're going to be a, you know, a relaxed group. Yeah, as far as the Canucks go, they'll lean on guys like Ian Cole, who has played in eight game sevens, and Tyler Myers and Carson Soucy and Lindholm and Miller, and a few of them have done this, but not together. Rick Tockett hasn't been a head coach in a game seven yet, so hmm. they're going to learn some of these lessons together. We'll see if the, if the lessons are memorable or disappointing and ones they want to forget. I wish we could have a 14-game series so I could hear some more stories about you guys on the road, but we got to go because we got to talk with our (laughs) NHL analyst, Marty Biron, about Besser and Game 7. So, Ryan Farhan, we will talk to you Monday night after Game 7. This has been... Why am I on the outside? Why am I way out there? How did I end up on the far right? Nobody knows. Between two reporters.